Guys, what is going on? I hope you're doing well. Ben Bane Davis back here for another pointless video. Uh, today, I want to talk about Michael Chandler. I've made a number of videos about McGregor and Chandler and this fight and the fact that it's not happening. And earlier today, Michael Chandler sent out a video, um, just a little selfie, just a little selfie view, no worries, talking about the fight and that he's still going to show up to UFC 303. And I thought that it was interesting for a couple reasons but the biggest one in particular is that this guy's depressed this he is going through it um so without further ado here's the video it's ufc 303 alex Pajeda versus yuri prohaska and just uh six days ago it was mcgregor versus chandler it's my card it was my card whenever i signed the bout agreement signed my name to a piece of paper that said i would be at ufc 303 I made a promise, I made a commitment, and that commitment still stands. Because your word is your bond, and without your word, you are no good. If you cannot be relied upon, if people don't believe that you're going to follow through with what you say you're going to do, the definition of integrity is doing what you say you're going to do without fail. So yes, I will be at UFC 303. No, no, I will not be fighting at UFC 303. But I'm going to see through to my commitment. We still have another. <laughs> we still have another 43 seconds. <laughs> um, I'm gonna. We'll pause midway through, and unpack a little bit of what he's saying. You honor your commitments. I have to act with integrity in mind. I signed a piece of paper that said I'd be there, so I'm gonna be there. That is null and void considering that the fight is no longer happening. Mike shouldn't feel pressured. He shouldn't feel like he has to show up to T-Mobile on June 29th um, purely because he signed this bout agreement months ago that is now irrelevant and broken. I mean, it's the, you, you signed a fight contract, so you can't say, I have to abide by this code and and i put my name down on a piece of paper because what what where did you put your name down a fight contract guess what's not happening a fight so you don't have to feel pressured you don't have to feel like your integrity is in question if you're not present at t-mobile on june 29th that's not a slight on your character i think everybody understands that it's a rough draw and um a rough rough hand that he's been dealt excuse me and uh th that's that you don't have to do this <laughs> effectively and it sort of makes me wonder like is he going to cut weight is he going to hit 155 on june 28th and then uh, uh be there in his fight kit on the 29th like what is the extent to which he is going to honor this contract that he signed right and and play it up i don't know i if he wants to go as a fan right and and just show up and get those nice ufc floor seats why not more power to him in fact i think he should i think he should show up and be there and just be like listen i'm present guess who isn't the guy i was supposed to fight and and keep turning that knife but framing it as this like integrity play and my word is my bond and it's not even at all contextualizing that the fight fell apart like if you if you if you listen to this um, without the knowledge that the Conor McGregor situation occurred and he has an injury and now he's out. If you just listen to this video, you would be so confused and you would like assume that Chandler's the one dealing with an injury. <laughs> you would, I feel like you'd come away from this video going, uh, oh man, is, is Chandler okay? Like, seems, sounds like he's trying to muster himself up to be there, but all right, let's keep, let's keep watching. Life and success and growth and attainment and getting the life that you want has everything to do with following through on the things that you said that you were going to do. Yeah, I understand the circumstances have changed and I would not be faulted one bit if I did not show up to UFC 303. Maybe I'm going with UFC. You wouldn't be. You wouldn't be at all. <laughs> 303 because I want to go to UFC 303. But I will be at UFC 303 nonetheless. Mainly because I made a commitment to be there. So hopefully 
I will see you guys out there. I just feel bad, man. I, I everything I learned about Michael Chandler um, in in the last couple of weeks, I just feel bad about because he seems like a fantastic guy. He seems like a really um, great family man, and he's a fun fighter. This guy's a very entertaining action all action fighter and we've forgotten about that i think i think mma fans in the last like two years since he competed have forgotten how fun mike chandler is in the cage and this entire scenario of waiting for mcgregor and a lot of people are saying it looks desperate that he's sitting out i uh it just makes me feel bad here's dana white yesterday on jim rome's show talking about it uh chandler <laughs> I think poor Chandler wants to wait for Conor McGregor, man. And, uh, you know, but w whatever he wants to do, if he wants to get a fight this summer, we'll, we'll do whatever he wants. That, that, he's one of, one of the greatest athletes I've ever worked with. He's a good human being, and uh, I like him a lot. Whatever he wants to do, we'll figure out he, for him. He's a good dude, man. Michael Chandler's really a good is. dude. Quickly, where does that leave Chandler? So that's an interesting, um, interesting quote there from Dana. We'll do whatever he wants. We will do whatever Michael Chandler wants. So he has got everything in the palm of his hand. Mike Chandler could have fought Charles Oliveira on June 29th. Uh, I heard that being reported. I heard that they were scoping that out. He could have run that rematch back. Uh, if I'm Chandler, I'd probably maybe try and go against Mateusz Gamrot because you think about it stylistically, that would be the best fight in the top five. I think Gamrot's top five, maybe top six. Um, but it's it's all you got to do is just avoid the takedowns. All you have to do is stop the grappling game like Benil Daryush did, and I feel Chandler's power would cause some big issues for Gamrot. Hell, even RDA had Gamrot hurt in that first round. You know what I mean? So if I'm Chandler, I say, okay, listen, the Conor McGregor fight's not occurring right now, uh, and I don't want to sit on my ass. Let me just nuke uh, Gamrot, and then that'll maybe preserve the, the Conor McGregor fight. Now the question is, do you want to risk that? Do you want to risk that? Because if he goes out there and loses to Oliveira again or loses to Mateusz Gamera, the Conor fight's completely gone. The Conor fight has absolutely been extinguished. And so it's this play of, you know, do I sit and wait and, and maybe get this guy at some point? Maybe when he's ready and actually going to come back, do I sit and wait? And that's the card uh, that I'm going to play? Or do I play the card of not wasting the little time that I have left in this sport and still providing action and entertainment and working towards the UFC title, which I assumed was one of his goals. I mean, that's what he kind of said. Uh, but this this entire situation with Conor McGregor, I think, has changed my perspective on what I thought Chandler wants. Um, and at this, point in the, this, at, at, at this point in the career, it's Conor McGregor. And outside of that, it doesn't seem like Chandler's interested in anything else. So um, I guess he's going to wait, and who knows if he gets it. But in my opinion, I hope he gets the Connor fight sooner rather than later. And if not, let's at some point cut the cord and get him back in to the top 10 at lightweight. Because, again, he hasn't fought in two years, and he's the sixth-ranked guy. At some point, you got to shit or get off the pot. So Chandler, I, you're great. Wishing you health, wealth, and the best that I possibly can. Um, but I just want to see something happen soon. All right. Make sure you like. Make sure you subscribe. And let me know down below. If you were Michael Chandler, what would you do? Adios.